how do you determine at what point a child has mastered a skill? Is it after they've answered 20 questions correctly? And where, how did you determine that, that point? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's, there isn't actually a set uh, question um, limit that a, that a child must hit in order to master a skill. We base it upon a, the percentage, essentially, of correct answers um, in a certain time frame. So let's say a child answers, you know, the first five in a row correct, that might qualify as a mastering a skill. But if they're answering one right, one wrong, one right, one wrong, then they might more than five uh, questions answered in order to deem that they've mastered that skill because clearly they're still making some mistakes and there might be some uh, concepts that they need to clar- get clarified along that path. So I, one of the things I think is really interesting is how you've thought about social emotional development and combined it with the way you approach learning math. And in my own experience working with students, I found that children with very low confidence in math start playing prodigy and all of a sudden they feel like they're good at math again and they enjoy it and it just changes their entire view of themselves almost miraculously. And I I know that your algorithm automatically progresses students through standards with the goal of keeping students in their zone of proximal development where they're optimally engaged and learning and this keeps them motivated and encouraged. Can you tell me kind of how do you find define the zone of proximal development and what are the ways that you're building your app to to use this to keep students motivated and encouraged as they learn math? The zone of proximal development is a is, is a really interesting concept that we actually built a lot of our how the algorithm adapts, adapts around where there's a bit of a seesaw. So on one end, if kids are getting all the questions right, uh, that means that they're really not learning anything, but they might be having fun and kind of going through the game and advancing really quickly. Um, on the other side, if the content is really challenging for kids, they might be answering the question slowly and progressing more slowly through the game. Um, but they might actually get frustrated to the point where they say, Hey, this isn't worth it. I'm going to give up. I'm going to go do something else. So there's a constant balancing act uh, in terms of how you keep kids in their zone of proximal development. 